This is my time. I'm on the rise. Can't hold me down. I'm too fly. This is my time. Ready to shine. Brighter than all of the lights. Cause when it's game time. Seconds away and the game's on the line. There ain't no doubt in my mind. Beating the buzzer like. This is my time. Welcome to the Twos Review here from Fifth Third Bank Stadium in Kennesaw. I'm Jason Longshore. Tonight, Atlanta United to earn two points in the MLS Next Pro table with a shootout win over New York City FC 2 after a scoreless 90-plus minutes here at the Fraction. In the shootout, Javier Armas went first and converted for Atlanta. Noble Okello, Alan Carlton also converted Two big saves from Josh Cohen to go with his five saves on the night in regulation. That gave Atlanta the opportunity to win it in the fifth round with Karim Tamimi earning that extra bonus point for Atlanta against New York City. Final stats on the night. It was a very even match here in Kennesaw. Overall, 21 shots in the match, 11 for Atlanta. Both teams had five shots on target, so five saves each for Josh Cohen and Alex Rando. Cohen with maybe four of the five of the spectacular nature. Atlanta blocked four shots. New York City had the possession advantage, and they passed it 90.5%. But as you'll hear from Steve Cook, from Matthew Edwards, from Karim Tamimi, That's a little bit by design in the way that Atlanta approached New York City and the way that they wanted to build up. 12 corners on the night. Seven of those were for Atlanta. 14 crosses for Atlanta. They were able to get down the flanks a good bit on the evening. Atlanta was also pretty physical. Out of the 21 fouls committed by both teams, 14 of them were committed by Atlanta. This was a a match where it felt like it went in waves of momentum. Each team would kind of have five minutes, maybe ten minutes, where they were in control. Atlanta United, too, uh, in a team that has at times been shaky defensively over the past couple of years, I thought they did a pretty good job of limiting what has been a high-powered attack at times for New York City. This is a team that... Beat New England 6-2. They scored twice against Columbus, one of the better teams in the league. This is a New York City team with goals in them. Jonathan Shore, who started the match, had four goals coming into the match. Unable to get on the board. A big part of that was Josh Cohen. But also the back line in front of him. A little bit makeshift tonight with Javier Armas playing as a center back alongside Ramsey Korosmi. You had right back Matthew Edwards. And on the left side, you had Jacob Williams, who I thought had maybe one of his better performances for Atlanta United, too, and especially since he's converted into a fullback after the injury to Daniel Russo. Let's start the postgame show with my conversation after the match with Steve Cook. First shootout win of the year, scoreless draw. What's the feeling after that? Look, I mean, we've got to be happy with a clean sheet. Uh, they're hard to come by, especially against a team uh, like New York City, who play some nice uh, football. Um, I, I still think it's the most bizarre thing I've ever been in in coaching, where you go to penalty kicks in a league game. Um, and, uh, you know, but as I mentioned, it's better to win them than to lose them. And I think it's good practice maybe for playoffs, for players if they end up playing in that kind of level. Um, Pleased with the overall effort and commitment and defensively were pretty solid. Josh Cohen made a couple of great saves behind them. Obviously, again, I think that last 20 yards, it's, it, it was difficult for us to find a real opening and a real chance. And, and I've not seen anything statistically, but it seemed to me we couldn't quite carve out that clear opportunity that would have, would have won us the game. Yeah, that's kind of what it felt like to you. The other thing it felt like to me is a lot of waves of momentum both ways. Yeah. I feel like... You guys would have it for about five minutes. They'd have it for five minutes. Yeah. How did you feel like your team handled when things went against them tonight? Pretty, pretty good. I mean, look, you're right. I think it was that game where they came at us, kept possession well in our half. We did the same. Both teams looked like they could get a goal on a counter-attack. That looked to be the, the method for both teams, really. Solid defensively. 
and then maybe in the counter press you can get something going forwards and I thought we had a couple of great opportunities but then it kind of went dead in the final moments they had a couple of great chances as well and again Josh made a couple of good saves but um, you're right I think it was that game that both teams probably at times felt they had control uh, and then there were, there were moments then where I felt we'd control the game sometimes defensively as well didn't really feel like we were under too much stress but um, it would have been nice if we could have turned one of those chances for us and a, and a, and a counter-attack moment into a bit more quality. That, that might have uh, given us the three points. Coming into it, I, I kind of looked at two players that I thought would match up a lot in Carrizo and Aiden Torres. Really good battle between two of the yeah. most talented young players in the league. How did you feel like Aiden did? Aiden's done really well and, and look, Carrizo's a very, very good young player and, and make no mistake, that that's two good young players 16 years old trying to trying to make a name for themselves and trying to get a career and I think the, the one thing with Aiden Torres is his bags of energy he's, he's a really committed player obviously gets his yellow card maybe needlessly again in the in the middle of the first half which the last 20 minutes when we brought him off it wasn't for any other reason we just didn't want him to get a red card and then be missing the next game and, and be down to 10 men before the end of the game. That was really that, that choice we made. Um, but but Aiden I thought was terrific again. He's growing a little bit of maturity, needs a few things to clean up, especially with his passing in his own half and, and, and you know silly giveaways. But I think he's got a real chance to be a good player. Uh, Armas starting at centre back with Kawazmi. How do you feel like Javi did in that, that role? Javi is great. He, he, he's obviously gone in at centre back. It's not his preferred position and it's not a position that we prefer him to be in either. Uh, but I think that because he's so good technically and he's such an intelligent player, he can probably play in a few different positions. And uh, that's what leaders do. They, they, when called upon to play in a different position or a different role or, or something that maybe they're not comfortable with, they get on with it. They, they, don't complain. They 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 give it their best and they play well. And and I think Javi Armas because he can do that is a, is a big big player for us. Last one is the first half. It felt like New York City was very deliberate at times. Center back goalkeeper, center back goalkeeper back across. Your guys were very patient in those yeah. moments. How did you kind of? want your team to either deal with that or potentially try to change it and disrupt it. Yeah, you're right. And, and I think, look, the, 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 uh, again, they might have had a, look, a few passes back and forth, centre-back, centre-back, goalkeeper, centre-back, and so on and so forth. But none of that hurt us. It was all in their half. And we, we'd ask the players to be a little bit more patient, maybe stop the, 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 the ball coming through the middle of us. Obviously, New York City, when they connect two or three passes if you if you jump out a little bit too fast I think they can they've got the ability to pick you off and they've got a lot of players centrally to uh, receive balls in the pockets they've got um, some quality players in there as well to, to technically deal with the space and uh, I think our guys did a good job of kind of forcing them wide making sure that we eliminated real big moments for them uh, and I thought we handled it quite well but again New York City they're, they're a really good uh, team very well coached Matt Pilkington I've known him a long time and he's a he's a top man and a really really good coach and I think his team reflects that and it it looked like a city football group team playing against us you know and and I think for us to get a clean sheet against uh, them is is, is uh, credit to the players they did a good job and again just disappointed we couldn't quite get the, get the winning goal thank you Next up on the Twos Review, post-game after Atlanta United's shootout win over New York City. I still don't really know how to refer to these at times. It was a scoreless draw through 90 and stoppage time in the shootout Atlanta United to win. So they get two points on the night in the table. I think Steve Cook expresses it very well in that it's still kind of a weird feeling. It's a draw, but it's a win, so it's better than a draw. It's better than losing the shootout, but it still feels kind of strange. Atlanta United gets two points in the table. That part we know. Also, we know who earned them those two points alongside Josh Cohen with all of his saves. Kareem Tamimi, he had the winning conversion in the penalty shootout. Let's hear from the Frenchman after the match. First uh, shootout this season, first win in a shootout. Um, kind of an interesting game, a lot of chances, but no score in regulation. Just how did you feel about how the 90 went? 
uh, the 90 minutes yeah. during the full game. Uh, the way they were playing, it's uh, based on possession. Uh, we didn't want to really press them or mid block, so uh, more part of the time the, the rhythm was a bit slow because they're trying to find a way to break us, they couldn't, and we were waiting for them to to lose the ball to counter-attack them. I think we did pretty well, we were patient. Uh, we maybe needed more chance and more uh, efficiency on the last 20, 20 yards. Fortunately, there's some days like this, but we knew how to suffer together at the end. We make a few subs. As you know, the season is long. We're missing some players. Some guys go first team, some others play 17. Some guys came in at the end. We finished with the, with the young squad and they did really good. Everyone has his chance to show up and step up. So that's good. And so it's also good um, to have a clean sheet at home. And uh, you know, two points, it's important. At the end of the season, last year, I think we lost a few uh, um, penalty shootout and, and at the end we needed those points so that's good to win the first uh, penalty shootout of the season at home too. I see about it you mentioned it too that first half New York City a lot of passes between the center backs and the goalkeeper and you guys were very patient you know how difficult is it because I don't know if this team would have done that last year in terms of waiting it out for the right opportunities. Yeah uh, it demands a lot of patience and uh, at the end, you have to listen to what the coach has as a plan for the team, because if not, after you mess up all the preparation of the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it shows also that we can uh, <coughs> change uh, the way we play, depend on the team. And uh, but we also have our identity. Like I said, every week there's different players starting. So so you need to change also compared, like, about the team that you play against. And I think we did pretty well. The only thing they were missing was the goal. And uh, fortunately, we didn't score, but we, we still got the, the positive at the end. At the end, with the, the young players around you, uh, three players from the academy and, and Ashton, who has just signed a pro deal. You know, when you're in that position and you're the, the senior player in that group, you know, how well does this young group kind of understand those moments and how to handle them? How much do you have to be vocal to organize them? Uh, it's a lot of communication, um, also more without the ball to tell them to step left and right, to close the space, to make sure if uh, one player is moving, I take him and he may take the other one. So yeah, it's based on a lot of communication. When we have the ball after it's different because they have to express themselves and their personality because they're good players, that's why they're here. And uh, at the end is the heart, how much heart you put when you come. <coughs> and um, they show that they have heart and they really want to like do good. And uh, like, like I said, they're not the only um, young players that they play in this league. There's a bunch, some of them, they've been playing here for two, three years. Some of them are starting, some of them are MLS. So that is, the age doesn't really matter now. I think in this league and you have to step up and to be ready and I think this is what they did and that's good for the future. Back-to-back -back results here at home, you get another home game next Wednesday. Not sure what the squad will look like with the Open Cup game on Tuesday, but how important is it to continue to build momentum? Um, the most important will be uh, off the field to rest, do a lot of recovery. Um, also thanks to the, the trainers that take care of us every day, they do a great job. We have to be grateful for what we have as well. Uh, when I was in college, uh, sometimes, you know, there's 25 players, one trainer, it's hard. Uh, here we have a really good infrastructure and really good staff to work with us. So, so we just have to use this, make sure we cover well, drink well, eat well, sleep well, and uh, we go again. That's what we, we live for, you know, game, game, game. That's the best thing to do. It's the best part of our job is to play. And, uh, doesn't matter who's gonna be here, who's gonna be on the first team, who's gonna be on the second. At the end, that's 11 players on the field. And uh, it's an opportunity for everyone to show what they have. Back on the twos review here from Kennesaw after a scoreless draw in regulation and a shootout win for Atlanta United. Two, two points added to the table. And let's take a look at the standings as we wrap things up 
here in Kennesaw as we take a look at the divisional standings. In the southeast, Chattanooga, 15 points. They're in first place in the division. Miami on 10. They lost tonight to New York Red Bulls to Orlando on 9. Atlanta is now even with Crown Legacy on 8 points. Crown Legacy does have a game in hand. Huntsville with 3 and Carolina Core with 2. It'll be Carolina coming to town next Wednesday. And that's going to be a very interesting match for Atlanta United too because it comes the day after Atlanta United hosts the Charlotte Independence of USL League One here in Kennesaw. Possibility of some of the players that we saw tonight, especially goalkeeper Josh Cohen, maybe others as well, getting that match in the Open Cup. So what does that mean for Atlanta United too next Wednesday? All hands on deck, and we'll see what that lineup looks like as we get there. But let's talk to one player in the captain here for Atlanta United 2 who will be a very valuable part of one, if not both, of those games next week. Matthew Edwards, who had a great match tonight at right back. Let's hear from Matthew right now after the match. It's kind of a a wild back-and-forth game where it felt like a lot of things in it for no score in regulation, just... How did you feel the momentum kept shifting back and forth and how you guys handled that? Yeah, it's definitely an open game. Um, they had a lot of chances. We were creating a good amount of chances too. And it just we none of us could put in the final touch, but that's a good team that we played and they're really good on the ball especially. So that was a good test for us in terms of keeping our shape and making sure we don't get broken too easily. And it happened a couple of times. It's a good thing that keep her behind us to save us. But I think, yeah, it was an open game and we expected that today uh, just because our game plan obviously was to go at them. So, but they're a good team, and we, we held our own and obviously got the points at the end of the day, which was good. How much confidence does it give you guys on the back line when Josh makes a couple of the saves that he did tonight? It's, it's great to have him behind us. Um, you just feel comfortable, and anything that you can't fully get a touch on, he, he'll be behind you to save you. So that's really a good feeling to have, especially for us, a team that's conceded a lot of goals so far. That was good to have him back there. Give us a little bit of confidence, for sure. Biggest thing that has jumped out to me about your development as a pro now is your increased impact in the attacking half. Mm-hmm. Is that something that has been a focus for you, you know, kind of getting into, especially the fullback roles that you've been playing? Yeah, I mean, Russo kind of getting hurt this season hurt us a lot, and we needed to make an adjustment. So, I mean, the adjustment was pushing me a little higher and putting me out of my comfort zone, which for me, I'm more defensive-minded. Yeah. So this is going to be good for my development, I think. Um, just keep getting those reps and hopefully – the final product will come. Just gotta keep going, and I'm just the biggest thing for me is just getting up there and seeing what happens. Because I mean, when I was younger, obviously everyone scores goals and stuff, so <laughs> it's not out of my range. But just want to keep getting those reps, and I think it'll come eventually. So in in this one, it was kind of a, a mixed bag as the lineup went on. A very young team at the end. You know, as, as you've been wearing the armband all season long, what are the, the messages that you pass on to the academy players when they come into a game late that could go either way like that? Biggest thing for me, for young kids coming up, I mean, obviously, when I was 17, I also had to come up and play, and we had older guys to lead me, so it was good. So the kind of same message is you just got to run and play fast. That's the biggest thing, especially for young guys coming up. They're all talented players, but at times they play slow. Um, so that's the message I kind of deliver all the time is play faster, play faster. And then, I mean, the basic and the minimum standard here is you run. So that's, they need to bring energy when they come off the bench. I think they did that today. Um, but yeah, keep preaching to them, just play faster. And then they're going to keep developing and keep getting better. Managing the game late individually, because, you know, you're feeling the effects of all those running back up and down the wing. You know, how hard is it in those moments as the game's getting late and it's really tight when you're feeling the effects of all the running you're doing? It's difficult, but it's all mental. I mean, for me, at times I was like, oh, I'm feeling it, but I can't let them score. That's kind of the, the overall thing. And especially, you know, this year, it's different for me wearing the armband. So I need to just keep setting the example, especially for myself, but for the, the team around me, just keep going even when you're feeling it a little bit. I mean, obviously I cramped last minute, so it was kind of tough, but um, just it's all mental. You just keep going. So a busy week right now with first team tomorrow, Open Cup Tuesday. Another game for the twos on Wednesday. Um, how do you manage all of that right now? It starts tomorrow. It starts tonight, really. Just making sure I get my, my liquids in, rehydrate. I just get some rest for my feet up, and then tomorrow just trying to recover as much as I can and be ready for Tuesday and Wednesday, wherever, wherever.
whatever I'm needed. Just making sure I'm ready and prepared. Big two points tonight for Atlanta United, two here in Kennesaw. Thanks to everybody who listened on our first broadcast on the new soccer down here to .mixler.com. We had two broadcasts this evening as we wrapped up our high school coverage for the 2024 season. John Nelson and Madison Cruz were at River Ridge for their match with North Atlanta. I was here in Kennesaw for Atlanta United 2. It'll be John and Jarrett Smith next Wednesday here on SoccerDownHere.Mixler.com on the mothership for Wednesday's Atlanta United 2 MLS Next Pro match against Carolina Court. 7.30 kickoff pregame coverage will start at 7 o'clock on the SDH Network. Big win tonight for Atlanta United 2. Big thanks to Steve Cook, to Karim Tamimi, and to Matthew Edwards for talking to me after the match. Hope you enjoyed it, and get ready for a very busy time in Atlanta United land with first-team matches on Saturday – Open Cup first team on Tuesday, second team on Wednesday, and then first team back at the Benz the following Saturday. A very busy week ahead. We'll be covering all of it in various capacities on Soccer Down Here and also on 92.9 The Game and the Odyssey app. Thanks for being a part of it. We appreciate all of the support and hope you all have a very wonderful evening after two points in the bag for Atlanta United 2. Adios, everybody. 